So let's just take a moment and welcome everyone in the room. Just going to scroll through here. Welcome, friends. Welcoming one another with our hearts. There are three friends in the room here with me also in person. Welcome. <laughs> really happy to see you and happy to sit with you. Happy to practice together. Happy to come together and cultivate this beautiful quality of heart, our metta, our loving kindness. As we cultivate loving kindness, all of the other wholesome qualities of mind also are strengthened. In the Abhidhamma, the Buddhist book of psychology, Wholesome qualities of mind, the beautiful qualities of mind, all co-arise together. So as we strengthen our loving kindness, we strengthen our generosity, we strengthen our mindfulness, we strengthen our tranquility, we strengthen our equanimity. And a number of other factors of mind, our patience, our commitment to ethics and truthfulness, our balance of mind, all of these qualities get strengthened. We're creating deeper neural pathways, encouraging these qualities to arise in the future, cultivating strength, a much deeper kind of strength than, <clears throat> than our habitual reactivity that might be a reaction of anger or aversion, or ill will, or any any other state of mind that's rooted in our greed, our hatred, and our delusion. We're creating the conditions that automatically diminish our greed, hatred, and delusion, our craving, aversion, and delusion. It's the most deeply empowering thing we can do. Cultivating these qualities of mind shapes our experience in the world, shapes how we respond to stimulus, to things that we hear, things that we see, pleasant or unpleasant, contact on the body, physical sensations, taste and touch. As we cultivate this, as we practice these mind states again and again. They increase. They increasingly become automatic responses. Where previously we might react to a stimulus with aversion, irritation, hatred. We create the conditions for ease, for our kindness, for our care, for our compassion. The Buddha taught, this is one of the phrases from the Dhammapada, what, what we think about and ponder upon becomes the inclination of the mind. All of these arisings in our mind are a result of karma, are a result of past mental actions, of past mental habits. And we're habituating the mind towards wholesome, wholesome states that lead to freedom. The Buddha also taught in the Dhammapada, not to fixate and ponder upon the deeds and misdeeds of others, but, but, but what you yourself have done and left undone. And as we do a practice like this, doing practices that create wholesome states, 
very often we get to see what we have left undone, what we, the places where our loving kindness doesn't flow, where our negative reactivity or judgment or blame or shame might come in and block us from feeling loving kindness for other beings. And at this time in the world where there's such heightened trauma and reactivity and pain, all these different circumstances, violence, disease, this cultivation is one of the best things we can do. Leading to the end of our suffering, the end of our time in samsara, in cyclical rebirth, leading to the end of our craving and clinging that is our suffering. So settling into a comfortable position, checking in with the body, what would be most conducive to ease for this period of practice? Laying down, sitting, inviting in comfort and relaxation into the body, softness. Inviting in comfort and openness. Letting the body and mind settle. Taking in a deep, full breath. And relaxing on the exhale. Long, full exhale. And another deep, full breath in. Breathing through the whole body. And relaxing a little deeper on the exhale. Softening. Letting any tension release. Another deep, full breath in. And relaxing and softening on the exhale. Inviting the forehead, the brow to be soft and relaxed. The neck and the shoulders to drop or hang loose. The belly to hang soft and loose. And letting the breath become natural. No controlling. Just ease, inviting in acceptance for whatever arises during this period. No judgment, no need to worry. Just being here in this body, cultivating this beautiful quality of heart. If certain parts of this meditation resonate more strongly, invite that to grow. And if other parts don't resonate, let them fall away. I'll offer both visualization and phrases.
Inviting a, a felt sense into the body. Tuning into the heart center, the center of the chest. Inviting a light to arise, like a warm glow emanating from the heart. This is the energy of kindness. ease, letting this warm glow grow brighter and radiate through the body. An energy of care or a healing light glowing through the body. Letting this light grow brighter, illuminating every part of the body, shining through the bones, through the blood, and shining through the muscles and organs. Shining through all the tissues, every part of this body held in light, radiating through the skin, Letting this light grow brighter, illuminating every cell, every cell of this body. Illuminated. All the little cells happy to receive this energy. If there's anywhere in the body where there's pain or tension, in any place that we've judged or have aversion to, or dislike or hold in shame, inviting the light to shine there, inviting this warm glow. Illuminating the shadows. Holding every part with kindness. an acceptance
illuminating the entire mind space. Holding in this light all aspects of this being, this mind body process unfolding according to conditions. Inviting this entire being to be held in this light. This radiant energy emanating from the heart. Offering ourselves these blessings or any other blessings that resonate with your heart. May I be peaceful and joyful. May I be light in body and spirit. The light can grow brighter with each phrase. May I be safe and protected. May I be free from suffering and live with ease. What might it feel like to accept myself completely? What might it feel like to forgive myself completely?
What might it feel like to love myself? To appreciate my wholesome qualities. to offer myself the care that I offer others. To have compassion for myself when I'm suffering. What might it feel like to be free of blaming and shaming myself? Free. To be free of blaming and shaming others. Tuning back into the heart center and this light emanating from the heart. This warm glow permeating the whole body, the whole mind. This relaxing and easeful energy. Flowing through this whole being. This beautiful, radiant heart
Inviting this light to grow brighter past this being and outwards to everyone in this room together, all of us in this circle together, our dear friends on the path. Seeing everyone's heart glowing in this light. At ease. Maybe gently smiling as they receive this kind energy. Everyone here held by one another and holding one another, glowing in this light together. Sending our loving kindness to Anne, to Ashan, and Henry, to Rabbit, and Adrian. May you be well. To Andy, and Bobby. To Brent and Canyon Sam, sending our loving kindness to Charles, Danny, Doreen, and Yvonne. To Dusty, may you be free. Our dear friends, to Elisa, Erica, Eve, to Jano, Helen Wong, Indigo. To Ismalia, Jasmine, may you be free. To Jillian and Doug, to Jocelyn and Kago. To Kara, may you be well. Kimberly, Laura, Lori, Marianne, and Meb. May you be at peace in your heart, friends, to Parisa, Phoenix, Q, Quarry, to Rachel, Rosemary, Texta, may you be happy. 
to Therese, Truman, Angel and Cotton. To Hayden, Izzy, and Jane. May you be free from suffering. Dear friends, Everyone held in this light, expanding outwards to all of our loved ones, all the people in our communities. To everyone who's struggling, everyone in fear, everyone in grief, sending out this love. Just letting this light grow brighter and expand in all directions. Touching all beings on the land, in the sky, and in the water, all creatures. to all beings who are suffering and who will suffer. Human and non-human. All those beings who are oppressed or receiving harm and all those beings who are causing harm and oppressing may all beings awaken out of this suffering As I wish not to suffer, may all beings not suffer. As I wish to be free, may all beings be free. holding the whole world in this light. And 
Letting it shine on all beings equally. Thank you for your practice, everyone. Let's take two or three minutes, do a little stretching, drink water, let that settle in. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> so, just inviting that loving kindness energy to arise and offering it to these loved ones and friends. Hmm. Love to everyone. Compassion and kindness for everyone. In this time, where so many are struggling, so many are shaken, having difficulties and traumas compounding over this strange time in the world. There's a lot happening, a lot of hmm, polarization, increasing polarization, antagonism, hostility. Reactions, negative reactions, judgments. On all different levels. There's a greater recognition of the suffering happening in the world. And the Buddha's invitation for us to watch our minds, to always be watching our minds, to try to bring mindful, kind, loving awareness to every moment of every day.
This is the greatest resource I know of, really. This is mm, the Buddha's final words right before he died, right before he entered Parinibbana, uh, Nirvana. Uh, his last words were actually the words that throughout the recorded discourses of his teachings, he said the most often, they were apamadena sampadeta, and it's translated in various ways, but the, let's see, some people translate it as strive with diligence, <laughs> uh, referring to putting effort into being continually aware of what is happening in our mind, how our mind is responding and reacting moment to moment to moment to moment to different stimulus, what the mind is fixated on, becoming aware of it, becoming aware of what the mind's attitude is. Other other meanings or ways that this is translated, apamadena sampadeta, it it's also like vivid, clear awareness leads one to success. Success, <laughs> not being conventional worldly success, but meaning freedom, meaning liberation. Our clear, vivid, kind awareness. It's the greatest tool we have to understand the deeper nature of reality, and through this understanding, we become free. We are living here in samsara in this realm where suffering is inherent, where the nature of everything is impermanent, impersonal, and unsatisfactory or stressful. These are inherent in life in samsara. In one sutta, the Buddha talks about how through all these infinite lives in our wandering in samsara, we've cried more tears than fill all the oceans on earth. How much we've grieved, how much we've suffered. He also said that we've had more of our blood shed then fills the entire oceans of the earth. How many times we've been killed. Or died, had our blood spilled. The invitation being to do the work, to practice for liberation, to end these cycles of birth and death and suffering. To see how our mind is creating this reality, how our mind is creating our experiences and to be empowered in the deepest way, engaging most fully with our agency to shape our reality, to shape our experience, to direct ourselves towards more happiness, more freedom, more ease.
towards a deeper peace that becomes unshakable in the face of all the tumultuousness in the world and all the impermanence and suffering of this body that is subject to aging, sickness, and death. In the face of the fact that we're going to die and everyone we love is going to die, everyone here is going to die. And letting this reality motivate us. These are the divine messengers that point us towards the divine abidings, the Brahma Viharas, the qualities of metta, of compassion, of joy for the goodness of others, and of equanimity. With this understanding that our actions of body, speech, and mind, especially mind, create the conditions for our future suffering or our future freedom. That vivid, clear awareness that leads us to liberation moment to moment throughout the day, not just when we come to sit sit down and do formal meditation sitting practice, but all moments, all possible moments. We have to be really careful with taking in things like media, watching how it affects our minds, watch how our mind is reacting to a stimulus not just being lost in this story or that story, but recognize how we're being affected. You know, this whatever we think about and ponder upon becomes the inclination of the mind. So if we, you know, say spend an hour watching news that is all bad news, (laughs) And having this, you know, thought again and again, oh, the world is awful, people are awful, and like creating this as a pattern of mind. The world is horrible. Uh, That's just creating the conditions for more of that to arise in the future. These thoughts that we think again and again become embedded as beliefs. We also have a tendency towards negative confirmation bias. Um, in Western psychology. So things that we already have some kind of belief, we will see things that agree with that belief. As we get to know our minds deeper through practice, we can start seeing through these things, these beliefs that are actually also rooted in delusion, rooted in aversion, just a mental habit pattern of aversion. So say, you know, for example, I used to love watching violent movies. Uh, I would watch horror movies and things like that. And when I wasn't watching movies, my mind would have images of violence running through it. Or I would fantasize about violence or I would wake up in the night having dreams of violence. Towards that. What we take in, what we expose our minds to, the media, the news, entertainment, it actually matters. We want to be really considerate of how we are inclining our mind, what we decide to take in.
Another thing that's been at the forefront of my mind is the with the way that I see this increase in polarization or demonization of other people. Um, the reactivity and hatred or fear. We get we get news and information coming in that is about other people's acts, say of violence, for example, that are rooted in their greed and their hatred and their delusion. And in reaction to hearing that or seeing that, we also react with hatred coming from delusion. Recognizing how our minds are reacting to these stories, these things that we hear, that we see. And also recognizing within ourselves our own tendency to, towards that hatred, you know, the, the hatred that drives other people to, to violence or oppressive acts. Recognize how that kind of energy arises in our own minds. It might not drive us to do physical acts of violence. But understanding this is very, it's very important to understand how this energy lives in ourselves, how it's harming ourselves and creating our own suffering. Even, even just thoughts. And reflecting on our own mental actions, verbal actions, and physical actions. So, for example, I hear about people killing other people. And understanding that that is wrong And also reflecting on my own actions. When have I killed living beings? What living beings have I killed in my life? What lives have I taken? Sure, I haven't taken a human life. All the creatures, small creatures that up until I found the Dharma, I thought it would be good if I Smash that fly. I took a life that wasn't mine. I took the life of beings that wanted to live. This is taking the Buddha's invitation to not fixate and ponder upon the deeds and misdeeds of others, but what I have done and left undone. And reflecting wisely, reorienting my behavior, I will never take another being's life intentionally. And I reflect on that mind that, you know, in the act of, say, killing, squishing a moth, was remorseless. 
was compassionless. The Buddha also taught, you know, in these infinite lives in samsara, all these beings have been our relatives, have been our mothers, have been our children. Everyone here, we've all been family. We've all been on this path and practiced together in the past. All these beings in all their forms, they are our family. Even the ones who are causing harm in the world, great harm. Out of ignorance, they are also harming themselves and will suffer greatly in the future as a result. We don't have to hate them or punish them. We don't have to wish for them to suffer. That's just our own suffering. I brought a sutta I would like to read a little bit of. It's from a collection of the Buddha's teachings called the Majjhima Nikaya. And there were some people who were quarreling, some monks who were quarreling. They had taken to quarreling and brawling and were deep in disputes, stabbing each other with verbal daggers. They could neither convince each other nor be convinced by others. They could neither persuade each other nor be persuaded by others. And the Buddha talking to them. saying on this occasion where they're deep in disputes, stabbing each other with the verbal daggers. On that occasion, you do not maintain acts of loving kindness by body, speech, and mind in public and in private towards your companions in the holy life. Misguided men, what can you possibly know? What can you see that you take to quarreling and brawling and are deep in disputes? Misguided men, that will lead to your harm and suffering for a long time. There are these six memorable qualities that create love and respect and conduce to helpfulness, to non-dispute, to concord, and to unity. What are the six? Here, one maintains bodily acts of loving kindness, both in public and in private, towards his companions in the holy life. One maintains verbal acts of loving kindness, mental acts of loving kindness. One uses things in common with his companions in the holy life. Without making reservations, one shares them, any gain, including even the contents of his bowl. So sharing. Bodily, verbal, mental acts of loving kindness and sharing even the contents of his bowl. One dwells both in public and in private, possessing in common with his companions in the holy life those virtues that are unbroken, untorn, unblotched, unmodeled, unmottled, liberating, commended by the wise, not misapprehended, and conducive to concentration. This, too, is a memorable quality that creates love and respect. One dwells. 
with a view that is noble and emancipating and leads one who practices in accordance with it to the complete destruction of suffering. Of these six qualities, the highest and most comprehensive, the most conducive is this view, this understanding that is noble and emancipating and leads the one who practices in accordance with it to the complete destruction of suffering. And he talks, he goes on to talk about how this view leads one who practices to the destruction of suffering. And I won't read the whole thing, but what he describes is recognizing if the mind is obsessed. So if the mind is obsessed by sensual lust, if the mind is obsessed by sloth and torpor, or if the mind is sluggish and sleepy, if the mind is obsessed by restlessness and remorse, if the mind is obsessed by doubt, if the mind is absorbed in speculation about the world or speculation about other worlds, or if one takes to quarreling and brawling and is, in deep, is deep in disputes or stabbing others with verbal daggers, then one's mind is obsessed. It's practicing and being able to recognize these. Those are classically the five hindrances, the uh, hindrances to our meditation practice developing, to our wisdom arising. So cultivating our loving kindness, speech and mind, cultivating our generosity, sharing what we have with others, keeping to our virtues, our virtues being referring to not killing, not stealing, not lying, not causing harm through sexuality and not taking intoxicants that cloud the mind. And then having this right view, this noble view that brings us to practice, that motivates us towards cultivating this clear, vivid knowing moment to moment to moment to moment what's happening in this mind what's happening in this body that brings us to know the deeper reality of existence that sets us free from our clinging, our delusion, our confusion, our greed and our hatred. So it's 7.15 and I talked a lot more than usual. <laughs> um, if anyone has any questions and would like to stay afterwards, I welcome you to stay afterwards. I'll hang out for 10, 15 minutes and yeah, we can chat if there are things. So closing our practice together, offering the merits all this wholesome cultivation over this past hour and 15 minutes, offering all this goodness, this liberatory practice for the benefit of all beings everywhere in all forms. May we awaken and may others awaken.
Sade, sade, sade. <laughs>